Hey everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangout. I'm Noé, designer here at Adafruit. Ted Rock. I'm uh, Pedro Rice, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week we come to show a 3D printing project featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this show we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, smash them together, make uh, projects, inspirational hey. projects. That's right. Pedro, what's on the show today? Every week we have a lovely coupon code for you guys. And this week it's FAD FADRONE. <laughs> F-A-A DRONE. This week's project is a PSA. It takes you through the steps of registering your drone with FAA in the That's US. Right. I want to welcome everybody in the chat room. How's everybody doing? We have Kirby's in the chat room. JM2386 is in the chat room. Thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, we're back. Last week we uh, took a little time off, sort of, kind of. We uh, shot an episode still. We, yeah. we did the drone thing out in, the, in the Key West. And that was a lot of fun. Pedro sipping coffee, and I'm out of things to say. Move it on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have the free shipping stuff. Hey everybody, hello. We have free shipping still. If you uh, for orders that are over two hundred dollars or more, you get free shipping in the U U U.S. Here. What else do we have? Same day delivery in NYC for the lovely residents of New York City. We also have. Uh, if your daily <laughs> what is one stop again? shop to get your newsletter. daily tips. Sorry, it's called the newsletter. Electronics, make your business, 3D printing, wearables. Make your business was really nice yesterday. It was, it was about the, the stuff going on in Shenzhen. Yeah, so it's called Future Cities from yeah. Wired. Wired's doing UK. documentary style Very stuff awesome. with following Bunny. Yep. So it's just awesome Definitely stuff. Check that out. So be sure you subscribe to that. You do have to opt into it. Again, adafruitdaily.com and pick what category you want uh, stuff. It just came in today. Yeah, this that. week's uh, is on time travel business Are you maker, kidding me? Milestone. It came in just now? Yeah, it looks like it launches at 11 a.m. every day. Definitely check that out. Okay. Actually, just Monday through Friday. So subscribe if you're not already. All right. Go ahead and take a look at what we're working on. Prototyping. This is what we're prototyping. Work in progress this week. Noah, you got an awesome little wearable Pi Zero camera. Yeah, let me fix the camera. It broke. There it goes. <laughs> Adorable little. Hey, gum look shaped. at that! This is this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. That elusive. Maybe it's not real. Maybe it is real. <laughs> Raspberry Pi Zero. It's five dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, the new version of it. I think it's a two point one or one point three version. Whatever it is, it now has a camera display port. There's also an update to the Raspberry Pi camera module. I think it's 1.2. Yeah. Um, it's still that is awesome. Using. Yeah, still an awesome uh, eight megapixel camera. Uh, so this project is a collaboration project with Mr. Phil Burgess, aka Painter Dragon. He uh, wrote some time lapse software in C, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can um, take time lapses. Uh, so the the uh, I guess we call it sketch. The sketch. Uh, makes it so it's easy to um, modify the resolution of the of the photos that it's taking. Uh, you can change the intervals. You can change the quality of the image and a lot of other things. It's using the Raspberry Pi still um, frame, framework. No code, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's all terminal based. There's no um, there's no GUI really for it. So you have to do everything in terminal or in the .sh file. But it, the stuff that's in here, again, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero, the camera module. It has a power boost, 500C. It has a 500 milliamp battery, which will last about two hours. This is just about the same time as a GoPro session. So, so, it is so if you look at the GoPro session, this thing costs about 200 plus dollars. Mm -hmm. And the Raspberry Pi Zero, I think I gotta do, the, I gotta run the numbers, but five bucks, $30 camera, $20. It's like about, Fifty dollars, I believe, under a hundred dollars for for this build. Um, the little extra things are like uh, it has a switch to power it on and off, of course, button to safely power it off, and an LED to indicate uh, when it's taking a photo. So this is primarily for time lapses, and the lens is just something that I got from Photo Jojo. Um, it's like it's mainly for like your mobile phones. It uses a magnet on the end of the the lens and it has like a little metal ring that you just um, it has adhesive backing so you can, uh, glue it on there if you want oh and you just broke it <laughs> it's fine is it slippery no I just looked down and uh, lost my 
my grip on it now. All right. Well, it snap fits together, as you saw there. Actually, can we take it apart and look inside? I wouldn't, but you already did. There we go. <laughs> Uh, that, was, that was great. Um, so the the main goal it's of this real. project, <laughs> there's actually real, components yeah. inside. No, it's all CG. So <laughs> in MOSFET, it's not really alive. <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, it does snap fit together. Um, the main point of this project was to, I guess, kind of cram everything together without uh, compromise. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a, I fit everything together. Design in Fusion 360. Uh, you, you do want to have access to all the ports, so I had to make sure they had access to the micro SD card because that is where you're going to take the card out, put it in your computer, check the photos, modify uh, the intervals if you want to do that, um, and you can charge it because uh, the Power Boost 500C is is exposed there. At least the USB port is, and all of the the USB ports, the mic, the uh, the HDMI port, everything is is accessible. So it's really nice. Um, another thing is that we have a clip in the back, so you can swap this clip out. It is supposed to be wearable, so you can wear it on your persons. And it's sort of a compliment, or not compliments, but sort of uh, is a DIY version of the narrative clip. So if you've seen the narrative clip, it's a little wearable uh, camera that you wear on your persons, and it takes uh, photos throughout your day. And you're supposed to like review it and see what you're doing in your day. Uh, I think Becky uh, took a look at that um, a couple of months ago, or if not a year ago. Um, so it's like a narrative clip, but way cheaper and a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Probably not lighter. Cause so it's, it, like it, it's like 60 grams, right? Yeah, so it's uh, 20 grams lighter than a GoPro session. OK. So yeah, and a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper, yeah. So this is next week's project. Um, is it next week's project? Probably yes, next is, week's project, yeah. yeah. So we'll be shooting all the hero uh, video for that. And I don't know if you mentioned the clip can be yeah, switched out. Yes, I did. For a uh, quarter 20. You can put that on a um, tripod. Yeah. I don't have it with me right now, but it's upstairs on a tripod. Uh, so cool. yeah, we, we have the little little screws and stuff for tripod stuff. We got those a little bit ago in the shop. So we have cool. everything to make it, except the lens. You can either have a lens or not. This is a little wide angle lens. But it's up to you, however you want. Um, so that's the project. Pedro broke it, but it's all good. I'll fix it later. <laughs> and all some snap fits together. Yeah. Taking a look at the comments real quick. Kirby is saying that the camera port or uh, clip is fragile, which um, we can contest to that. Yes, you actually have to blow on it Nintendo style. Otherwise, you get like green frames that pop up when yeah. it takes photos. That's right. So you got to make sure that the um, the ribbon cable and the port for that is even clean. So sure, yeah. that's how fragile it can yeah, be. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah. Um, Another thing that I've noticed is like focus. Like you have to kind of uh, yeah. uh, use some fine tipped uh, tweezers to uh, to twist the lens. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it's like selfie mode. It's like good for like this far, but um, when you want to do infinity, you have to kind of mess with the focus. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Brian is saying that that would make an awesome open security cam. Yes, I think for monitoring stuff, uh, it would work really well. Oh, I mm -hmm. see what you did there. Yeah, the little... Uh, there you go. It's good now. Yeah. Uh, switch to the saying, bottom. saying, oh, figures, brother's breaking your toys. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I'll break his stuff later. Um, it's, it's probably really good for monitoring stuff. So let's say you have, like, an Internet of Things garden or something. You want to keep track of... Um, your garden, your or whatever you're playing. You can, yeah, your flower growing is a Signature good example. Signature like a plastic containers uh, keep the moisture out okay, and all that. Okay, that's a good idea. And uh, it should yeah. be good. I, I, it's, look, we have the ports um, accessible so you can tether it if you want. It's Right now it's portable. Again, it's going like, to last about two hours or so. And Gavin is saying in the chat room that motion can be activated with a program called Motion. On your Raspberry that Pi. That is cool. Yes, yeah, so and there's also face that. tracking stuff you can do with OpenCV. I see, I've seen Tony DeCola do stuff with mm -hmm. OpenCV on the Raspberry Pi. Um, this is just one configuration. There's so many things you can do with it. I'll, of course, release the, the, the files. It's just mm -hmm. like the simplest thing I can come up with. You do have to safely power it down, so we have yeah. that uh, uh, programmed for you. We'll talk so, about that when yeah. it comes. Um, yep. A Definitely drop make cam. a good drop cam. We actually just so. got some Nest cams all over the house. Yeah. So definitely would have been better to get those, <laughs> or to get mm -hmm. this instead of that. But yep, you can definitely set up a, uh, a SFTP drop cam. to save the event clips over. Yeah, just throw a Wi-Fi dongle on it or wire it in. Yeah. Um, Lots of uh, cool little ideas you can do. So. Make like a tie out of it or something. Yeah. For you, your can go, you can wearable You can use the Noir camera too to, to do... Uh, 
Yes. Was it night night vision mm -hmm. or something? Yeah. Yeah. So Hopefully. awesome. Cool stuff. That's what we're working on for this week. Yep. Again, we'll talk about it and release the project next week. This week, again, FAA drones. Pedro, why is it important to register for the drones? Um, <laughs> yeah, so the there was a register your quadcopter and yourself uh, with the FAA. Yeah, so it's super easy to do. Um, I haven't seen anybody do any videos on this. I thought it was like, you know, a long test. And, you, know, you had to do all the studying, but it's pretty much just creating a profile um, and then just linking that to the registration number that they give you. You label your drone with that. It's only uh, $5 per person and you can fly an unlimited amount of drones. Just put that on the registration number. It has to be visible. You can put it inside a battery Apartment if it doesn't require any screws and it's uh, 250 grams and up uh, for 55 pounds and more you're gonna have to send in paper registration and that's probably if you're like a film crew if you're using like a red epic camera or something like that which you probably have to get um, some you know release forms on the property you're filming anyway Okay, but so you put together this guide on the process. It looks like a lot of reading, but... So the bottom portion is if you're doing commercial flying, uh, which the rules were just released um, yesterday. Wow. It's called the, the 107 uh, form that you're going to have to fill out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that one as well. Um, the studying material is going to be available sometime in August, so that's when I'll start taking a look at that. And... Um, if yeah, you're a if hobbyist, you, though, it's you're still gonna have easy. to yeah you're still gonna have to register your drone. So whether you're doing this commercial or hobby, um, it's super easy to do. It's like a one page you. thing. Yeah, if you catch you, they can penalize you with stiff fine. So it's you know it's better to just register it, pay the five dollars. Has anybody been penalized yet? Um, I think there are some cases, okay. and actually one was just uh, uh, Mentioned? find as non-guilty <laughs> just yesterday oh. there was somebody who was in LA um, film uh, filmmaker who was making a documentary on um, oddly enough a movie about a, uh, a youth who had gone into aviation to get away from you know poverty and things like that Whoa. so it's kind of funny and uh, ironic on that oh, one. but okay. yeah he won a non-guilty uh, because you know the government is gonna have to adjust to you know technology they can be used for way more good um, recently there was like a fire that was going on and they can get into it so what did they use drones, drones to you know to survey the area find out where any you know victims were so okay. you can definitely use this for a lot more good than evil so cool. it's uh, everybody has to play nice though register your drone and just you know right. fly within the bounds of the law but not every drone just ones that are over Half a pound. Yeah, which we recommend you guys do if you want to get into flying. Start off with a little tiny drone. Yeah, half a pound. On your way up, uh, which uh, we actually didn't do. Um, one of our first projects uh, with Adafruit was, I think, like our fifth or sixth project. Um, Phil just sent over a Iris drone from 3DR, so we built some NeoPixel rings around it so we could fly at night. This was in 2013, so there were any regulations around there back then. Any, yeah. yeah. So we can crash this willy-nilly. But this is what we started off with, this ginormous lawnmower of propeller blades. <laughs> yeah, and our project was to make a um, just some prop guards with T-glaze and nylon-type filament, mm -hmm. and we put some uh, NeoPixel rings on each, uh, on each arm. Yeah, put some and longer legs on there. A battery and some longer legs. So this is pretty fun. Mm -hmm. But we um, definitely recommend starting off with a smaller one and then working your way up. Yeah. But super easy to do. Check out the guide. If um, one of the oh no, I crashed. One of the I guess the taste nuggets from that is the application that we're actually using to figure out where we can and can't fly. That's right. So in your guide, you link to this website here. What's it called? Where it is called Air Map. Should I open it? Super handy. So does it know where I am now? Yeah, it just uses the. Um, Oh, you need to fix the location that. services, or maybe it's because I'm in preview mode or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. So this is uh, a website, and what do we got? Agreed all their stuff. I agree to your stuff. I haven't read it, but yeah. So the FAA, I at the FAA, and some of the towers actually use the data from AirMap um, for certain things. You can see here oh, no, that in our area. Where my house is. <laughs> 
So you can see here in our area, we have um, pretty open space to fly around. Yeah. This is why you see us doing a lot of the projects. It's a lot of this. green over there. We should fly over there, huh? Actually, we already did fly over there. And the, um, I think the second droney uh, promotional video was in. Oh, that's the sawgrass? Yeah, the oh, swampy cool. water. Or swampy waters. I forgot the name. Grassy waters. All right, so as you go further out here, uh, turn on recreational five mile radius. Oh, so this is where all the airports are. Um, so in the rules, it says if you want to fly around there, if you go ahead and click in one of those areas, it'll pop up the phone number for the towers that are around there, and you can call that and request permission to fly around there. Cool. So anybody who's um, you know closer to the city limits or airports, you can fly. It has to be under 400 feet, and you can just request permission. Um, obviously, they they you know they'll probably allow you to since you're being you know honest your question permission um you do have to give the right away to any uh, aircrafts that might be landing so be cautious of that but um this is what will allow you know a lot more uh, people to fly that are closer to that area just request permission they'll know who's around the area cool and so there's a lot of uh options to sort through here i guess so the hospitals and schools and stuff yeah just so you can be uh, wary of where all those uh you know if you're like new to the area if you're like driving somewhere ah, i um, see you can see where all those spots are and be obviously cautious of any aircraft that are in the air um, flying mm -hmm. around us yep that's where all the uh, locations are this is where we were and we listened to a podcast called drone you and one of the things that we're saying um some people were complaining about why, you know, why can't they fly around national parks? And one of the loopholes that they uh, discovered was that you can take off from somewhere else, fly around the national park, and then go land um, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and that's, outside uh, of the park, I imagine. Outside of the national park, yeah. So just don't take off or land from there. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I don't think they've closed that loophole yet. Okay. Cool. But. So there's lots of information out there. We we have a guide, so check it out if you if you want to know more information. But and uh, just if you want to register, use common sense when flying. Yeah. yeah. Don't fly re reckless. And uh, don't put a gun on your drone. Don't put a gun on your drone. <laughs> All right. So the website is over here at register. I believe that Air Map does have an API. So check it out. It's um, cool. Somewhere in there about me is where they let you. Maybe check like all your, that out. your your drone will like go beep 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 when it's too close to an area or yeah. something. That's kind Actually, cool. the phantoms will not take off in restricted area. Oh, that's nice. That's fancy. Yeah. So this is the website to do it. Register my uas .gov. This is just for the United States, folks. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody that read all the rules. Anybody who's like visiting in um, will still have to register too. If like you're coming in from a different country to, to film things over here. Um, there are some steps that you have to take. Cool. So cool. That's this week's PSA project. Nice. And we'll be doing some more drone stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's why the coupon code is FAA drone. So if you want to pick up some stuff for your drone, like lights or materials. New lights. Or uh, Ninja Flex. <laughs> uh, two weeks ago, we showed the motor mounts that you designed for the Phantom 4. Yeah. Um, so when you're carrying that around, we just throw it into our camera bag, and um, the, there's mesh inside there that can get caught up in the little uh, motor mounts, so it just protects that. So cool. check those out. All right. This week's um, layer by layer. Now are you gonna? Yeah, I've been taking a break. I've taken a break on uh, the CAD stuff and doing more Raspberry Pi software type stuff. So I did two videos on how to manually install Octoprint for the 3.5 inch Adafruit Pi TFT. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I also did uh, one on setting up your Raspberry Pi camera module with the Pi and OctoPrint. So you can, uh, you can get your camera working with your OctoPrint rig that's using the Adafruit Pi TFT. Uh, so those are, those are nice. Uh, people seem to like it. So I plan to do some more actually on Friday um, I'm going to release a new one on how to make a Pi Girl image with the Raspberry Pi 3 because some folks uh, were trying to use the Raspberry Pi 3 with their Pi Girl 2 build and the image that we have is specifically just for the Pi 2. So if anybody's using a B Plus or Raspberry Pi 3 or even a Raspberry Pi 1 or 0, it's not going to work. So that's why I figured I'd show you folks how to set it up 
I'm manually using uh, two different guides, using uh, Phil B's guide, uh, running OpenGL games on the, on the Adafruit PyTFT and um, the, the Adafruit PyTFT tutorial. So those will be, that will be up on Friday. So hopefully folks will dig that. Yeah, software is usually a barrier to anybody who wanting to do any Raspberry Pi projects. They just assume that you know how to like change the directory. Yeah, like, some folks are saying like some of the instructions were left out in like the wiki page for mm -hmm. Octoprint because it, it says right on there. It assumes that you know, you know, a couple uh, command line stuff in mm -hmm. Linux terminal. So okay, hopefully that helps you guys out. Yeah. Cool. All right, do you want to do shop talk? Next up in shop talk, we got an unboxing of new CNC. Yeah, so the other Mill Pro was announced, I don't know, two weeks ago or so? About three weeks ago, yeah. Three weeks ago now, yeah. I just haven't had time to uh, make some projects for it, uh, but we were able to get a unit and unbox it and set her up. So uh, it's, here's the box, yay. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of tools. delay since they didn't send all the complete uh, parts for it. The collet was missing, some of the um, wrenches were, but. Yeah, I think mine was a special case. Yeah. Because uh, we're like going to be, we're a distributor. Um, so same foot size, same, same foot size. build area. <laughs> yeah, it's got um, some of the noticeable things. It has a faster, more powerful spindle and motor, so uh, you can you can do um, things faster. You can mill out faster. You can do more precision, precision, a little smaller. Um, yeah, finer pitch, finer pitch uh, circuit boards. Yep. So we'll take a look at that. We'll start up Milling Mondays once again. Yeah, I have to ramp that up again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is a quick unboxing. Um, first look at it. I One of the things get. we were super excited about was the engraving bits that came with it. OK, yeah, there's a 30 degree angle uh, bit, which is really nice. And there it is next to the original other mill. Noticeable differences, just the spindle and like some black. Scythe and gothy stuff. black. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Still white, but yeah, uh, you'll see some more stuff uh, with it. Okay, next up. Next up, upgrading got... the firmware on the Sigma BCN 3D. So we're still testing this. Yeah, Pedro, take it away. Yeah, so there was a 116 um, firmware upgrade for the BCN, and the LCD also needed to be upgraded since they fixed some things that. Um, updates the refresh rate on it and the way to do that is you can just see there I think it's gonna loop around once more it's right behind the LCD this little cover that you remove here and there's a micro SD card uh, that um, it is just take that out drop in drag and drop in the updated files and restart before you do that you want to open up Cura and install the new firmware through USB on the BCN um, I had some problems doing that on the Mac, though, so I went over to GitHub, which is where they have all of their open source files. If you guys haven't heard, they just released all their plans for the way that their independent dual extruders work. And you can find all that info here, the schematics, all the drawings for that. So compiled firmware? So that actually did not work for me. I had to download the entire zip file. You can uh -huh. do it right there. And then once you unzip that inside that folder, is where you'll have the hex file that you can tell inside of Cura, uh, install custom firmware from there, and that okay. should uh, get you up and running. And you recommend downloading Cura here? So you can go Yeah, you can to use their Cura. Um, if you already have it downloaded, it should point to the new uh, hex file. Okay. But if that doesn't work for you on a Mac, um, you can do it the manual way. All right, so. So you want to do that first and then update your LCD, because uh, as I found out, if you do it the other way around, um, it. Uh, can have some glitches. <laughs> okay, so I'm in this under support on the main bcn3dtechnologies.com. Okay. And right up there under support, you just download um, your software from there. You get so all the parts and you download new things. There's the Mac version. And which one do you recommend? This one? Yep, that's the only one. 15.04. Oh, okay. Cool. And that has. Uh, that should point to the new firmware from there. Okay, so you just use that. Okay. That's right. Cool. Um, it should work on Windows on the Mac uh, for whatever reason. Uh, I do have like four or five different Cura versions. <laughs> I have one for oh, the man. Type A machines. I have the two, um, the version two, the version fifteen for the Ultimakers. Oh my goodness! I have one for every printer has their own thing for Cura now. Yeah. 
That's great. I think, I think, think I'd like deleted one. Is what, whichever the one, yeah, that Taz. Taz has we had the Tazes. Yeah. So that All may right. have contributed or something. So we've been testing the Beastian so much so uh, that we came up with some problems. Yeah, so there seems to be some traction issues going on with the way that their E3D hot end. Um, so after some retraction, it looks like, because uh, sometimes you do need to have like, you know, two millimeter retraction on that, two to three. And once it pulls it out and tries to push it back in through the heat break right here, which is that little thing in the middle, um, it would cool down too fast and form like a little, um, it would get cooled. It down. would get cooled too down where it can't get, get pushed back into the, uh, the heat block. Oh no, no. And it would, get, yeah, it would get jammed every single time we would try to print a simple case. So we tried a lot of things. I thought a it was lot like of settings. I thought it was retraction. I thought it was like, you know, the, the speed of the retraction. Or we the tried length. heating at 250C. Yeah. More heat, turn off the fan. But and it's just so more. efficient at cooling down that it just, the, there was no heat creep on it. Yeah. So in the forms, you want to switch back over to that. Yeah. Somebody figured out that you just needed to put some, um, thermal paste like arctic silver on the threads of the heat break and they show you doing it right there and that totally fixed the problems so because of that they had delayed shipping our 0.6 millimeter nozzles so we could test out the metal filaments on that so you spoke with some folks at bcn and said hey this yeah, is Eric not working and, uh, guys Paul. what do you think and they're like oh we know yep we're so gonna they're already working on that <laughs> so we're gonna have that fixed before we stock the printers all right, and um, yeah, I just got myself some uh, Arctic Silver, and I'll try that out. So why is this has happened? How did we find this out? Like, we, we had so many successful prints. At a certain point, it just started happening? Or? Yeah, so um, this time around for the printing test that we were doing on here, because it was dual extrusion, because we had Cheetah Ninja Flex, we immediately started doing all the tests with dual printing Ninja Flex. And yeah, and it worked out really well. Yeah, because of the Ninja Flex, when it cools down, it's still rubbery and soft. It doesn't turn into a hard rock when it tries to push through the extruder. Okay. So we never noticed any of those problems because of that. But when we started doing like simple little boxes, you know, that requires a ton of retraction for all the portholes and all the slots, um, we noticed that. Yeah. So this was one of the f first te or second, I don't know, 10th test or something mm -hmm. of dual extruding. This is Pedro's uh, battery tester. It's using conductive PLA and coffee mm -hmm. PLA. And this is really where it started messing up. So this, yeah. is, this is actually a good successful print that we're going to show you here. But uh, my goal was to print this. This is the NPR project using uh, capacitive touch buttons using conductive PLA. I wanted to print uh, the outer case in uh, coffee PLA and the touch buttons and of course conductive PLA but that just kept failing over and over again because the enclosure has like 10 holes in it for the buttons and whatnot uh, for all the ports so that's where it started happening and this is Pedro's uh, FPV enclosure and you can see it's this is where it it's stopped already failing happening. Yeah, yeah it starts failing here because it's, it has it's starting to get to the portholes right mm -hmm. yeah, as soon as it starts doing all that retraction it cools down yeah. Um, near the top, right before the heat break. Okay. And uh, in the chat room, uh, Kirby is saying that, yeah, the E3Ds use thermal paste. So what I'm thinking is that they're buying these individual parts because that's probably going to have to be a lot more cheaper if you just okay. buy all the parts separately and then they, uh, they assemble it. Okay. So whoever is doing the assembly um, probably forgot that, you know, maybe it's somebody new. Maybe they just know. don't know. Yeah, yeah, they just didn't think to do that because uh, a lot of the... Um, like time lapses that they do, they do a lot of um, really good ones. And there's yeah. some of them that do a lot of retraction at the Vernoy uh, projects mm. that they've done. Okay. So maybe it was just a new person or something. But yeah, uh, in the forum, there were some other people having that problem. So now they know. It's yeah, probably they're aware. A big old sign probably in the assembly yeah. say, don't forget the thermal paste. <laughs> wow. But yep. So cool. we haven't tried this yet. We just got thermal paste in. Yeah, and it literally just came in yesterday at night, yeah. so we didn't have time to set all that up. Yeah, so but we're going to... This is actually gonna what I'm going to do right after the show, actually, after we get back from the Apple Store. Okay. This can I uh, film you doing it, I guess? Yeah, so, so we we'll do show video, folks our results. follow us on Instagram, we'll see all that stuff. Okay, so yeah. folks, if so anyone out there like, owns the, the BCN Sigma... And you're having retraction you're having problems. you're having retraction problems, or you don't know why you're getting failed prints, and you've tried everything, all the settings, all the temperatures, yeah, if you might close, need to... Um, to yeah. this <laughs> it's thermal paste. If you're close to a uh, micro center or something, we got to order ours. It's like seven bucks. Okay, um, and that should do ya. All right. 
So yeah, can't wait to try that out. Cool. Do you want to show this enclosure? This was actually successful. The Don't know how you did it. The quality on that is we did great. very good. Yeah. So I, th this is printed in black PLA. Um, I, I originally printed this out on coffee PLA on my FlashForge. But the FlashForge, uh, all of the, the little nubs, those are really hard to print, I guess. And they snapped off easily. Mm -hmm. This one held up really well. We sat there trying to pry them off, and they yeah. were really good. And the, and the infill for this was pretty low. Like, when it was printed, I noticed that it was, it was like, like one or three lines of infill. Okay, yeah. So it's not even that filled in. And it was super strong. So I'm yeah. very <laughs> impressed with that. Cool. So it can do very good um, cases. Right. But if we were trying to print this again, probably fail because we get, we have that heat creep. Yeah, we still got to do that. Problem. So after Cooling we problem. fix that, we'll uh, give that another go. And All right. This time we'll do it with the dual because this is with the conductive filament um, printed separately and then got um, it. held in place or snap fitted in place. Cool. All right. Moving on, we got some new stuff in the shop. You got this to move around in the shop. Better? We're not carrying it in the shop. We just got it for filming shop, yeah. proper, for filming yeah. purposes. This is gonna help us get around in the in the studio here. What is this? So oh. this is another electric skateboard. What? You got another skateboard, Pedro? Yeah. So. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from a company called Evolve Skateboards. They're out in Aust They're based in Australia. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys heard of the Boosted Board, which is an electric skateboard. This thing is way better than a Boosted Board. <laughs> I haven't tried a boosted board, but I, I'm a huge fan of Evolve. I got my Evolve skateboard um, 2013. like 2013. And this one is the All Terrain Carbon Series. They have a newer version, which is called the GT Carbon Series, which has two motors. This one just has one single motor. But uh, they were all sold out. I couldn't grab it. As the name implies, All Terrain means you can ride this outside of uh, just regular concrete, you can ride this on grass, on dirt. And it's got rubber tires. They're air-filled, carbon deck, um, very powerful motor, a nice Bluetooth remote, and a pretty decent beefy battery. So there's mine. Mine is the Bamboo series. It was one of their first uh, models, and I've been using it uh, since 2013. It was Works actually our excellent. second project with Adafruit. Yeah, it was actually our second project, and we did two projects with it. So let me show you so that to you now. If it loops around. Um, so, this doesn't have to, you don't have to have an electric skateboard, obviously, this, this is just a cool, here's how to put some lights on your skateboard using 3D printing. So we made some 3D printed clips, hot glued them on, used a, a, a trinket, microcontroller, and a battery to power the, uh, the, the, the LEDs, the NeoPixel LEDs. So we put some rings, and we had to easily, uh, we could easily disconnect it using jumper cables, it had like this cool little glasses set up with a little hinge. And um, yeah, it was a really nice project. Primarily for night riding is what we were... Yeah, um, safe. It's, it's ride safe. I don't remember what the line was, but <laughs> it's pretty cool. Designed it in like, Tink uh, not Tinkercad, uh, 1, 2, 3 design. Mm -hmm. And uh, just using some uh, demo code, Arduino code. Yeah, so primarily we're going to use this for filming the narrative uh, little Pi Zero um, wearable camera. Yeah. Since anytime we have to do any outdoor shots and I have to follow you around, I have to wear... Uh, rollerblades, which is kind of a pain since you can go way faster on the skateboard. Yeah. So now I'll be able to follow you, do some drone shots with that. Very cool and project. And uh, yeah, we'll do some more project, more the skateboard The benefit projects. of the all-terrain wheels, though, is that it adds a lot of, uh, much more grip, and it kind of absorbs a lot of the, the noise and a lot of the, the vibration, so you get mm -hmm. this incredibly smooth ride. Even when you go over, like, sp uh, speed bumps on the yeah. road. Yeah, so this thing is awesome. I'm jealous. <laughs> Maybe I will drop it on accidentally. <laughs> Very fun. Um, so we're just well, using they it. They have more for both on work and play as we try to they're do. They're putting more in stock on Monday, so take a look okay. at that. So that's just a, something we wanted to share with you guys. Why not? Sort of like a time. Yeah. Uh, time. What is it? Huh? Uh, Time capsule now. <laughs> time travel? Time travel. I, don't know, I mean, you can make a projects. DIY one. A lot of people 3D print their own and stuff, which is really cool, too. Cool, but uh, if you already have one, uh, you know, there's some easy thing, upgrades that you can do with 3D printing. GoPro mounts, the sword, uh, adding a lights is a nice one. Yeah. And of course, if you want to go all crazy, you can make your own skateboard as well. Actually, one of the projects that uh, the factory wanted us to do, because a lot of people skateboard there, obviously, was doing ones where you could put, it was safe to put them under the trucks, right? 
You just have to have like a good clearance like those. Yeah. And one of the things we were showing off is that it is a double truck system, which, what does that do again? Oh, double truck system is pretty nice. It just gives you a really nice carve and um, a bit more stability. So, um, yeah, it's pretty neat. I think it's unique to the, the Evolve skateboards. I'm not sure though. Oh, cool. I'm not too much of a skateboarder. <laughs> All right, so that's Shop Talk. Let's go ahead and take a look at this week's Q&A. All right, so um, we'll answer your guys' live questions if you have any. Definitely queue them up, but save them for now because we're going to go ahead and run through some of the questions that we have here that are on our YouTube videos. <laughs> uh, so Vlad B is asking if the Octoprint the, uh, the, uh, if Octoprint works with the Flash Bridge Creator Pro firmware, um, so there's a plugin called like uh, Sailfish XX or something. I've tried it out. It doesn't work too well. It's not really reliable. I would definitely recommend using Astro Box instead. Astro Print rather. Astro Print is open source. It's it's a fork of it's a derivative of Octoprint, but it's specialized uh, Sailfish um, printers. Yeah, it is, and it also works really well with the Maker Bots if you have one of those. Um, and it has an incredible mobile UI. Their whole thing was it was a uh, mobile responsive UI first, great UI, very clean mm -hmm. and uh, reliable. And then there's been some updates. It also supports the, the Raspberry Pi camera now too. So check that out. That's what I would recommend. I should probably do a follow-up video on that, but we do have a video uh, on Astro Print to the same setup, or actually a little bit easier setup. Yeah, if you have all the parts, you can just download the image for that, run yep. that on SD card, and should be good to go. Mm -hmm. The setup on it is actually a lot more easier. Yep. Than Brendan wants to know uh, if he needs a dual extruder for the Feather Weather Lamp project. Uh, nope, uh, you don't need one. If you just print the, the cover in like a white PLA or a transparent uh, material, uh, then it should uh, it's going to diffuse the light really well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So yes, you don't need a dual extruder. It's just sort of uh, that's just one of the tests that we were running on the Sigma. So. Yeah, not required. Good question. Uh, David wants to know uh, what 3D printer do we recommend? He wants one that's uh, big enough for something like the case and stand that we have printed there. I mean, there's so many printers out there. Uh, do your research. Look at reviews. Um, Joel and Angus and Anthony do some great reviews. We don't do too many reviews, but anything we have in the shop, we we use it. We we test Tested it. it thoroughly, All of our projects yeah. work on it. So I mean, some of them have smaller beds. Um, so it's hard for us to pick one. That's why we have an assortment of them in the shop. The one that will fit the stand is probably going to be the Flash Forge. It's going to be the cheapest one. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Um, I would recommend the, the printer bot simple, but we're actually out of stock on those because we're waiting to get the new one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, soon, I think sometime in July is when we're getting those in. Cool. All right. Okay, next one is from Aaron, who actually uh, is working on a, a Fusion 360 add-on to import Eagle files. And he's asking if we want a beta test. Yes, I've already reached out to him, and I am looking forward to testing that out. That is a very useful plugin, I think, for Fusion 360. And that's one of the cool things about Fusion 360 is that you can write uh, um, add-ons and, and plugins for it. Yeah. So that's really awesome. Can so yeah, Aaron, very that's, cool. that's very cool. Uh, Kevin wants to know uh, where do we get the rubber switches that I have in this, uh, not in this, I don't know why I picked the keyboard up. Um, the Pi Girl Zero, uh, I was testing out different buttons, I was looking for these silent buttons that don't make those clicky clicky sounds. Uh, we, or we placed an order for them uh, to a manufacturer out in Shenzhen, but it's been taking a, a long time, it's been like two months it feels like. Something's happened, yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, we're still waiting to get them, no status really. Other than uh, it's coming. <laughs> it should be coming soon. Yeah. Uh, I ordered mine on Alibaba. If you look on Alibaba or AliExpress. And the link to that is actually on the previous um, videos, yes. Video Thank you, Pedro, and the yeah. tutorial learn guide yeah, for that. So you probably want a link. I'll, I'll add a link in this description once we're done with the show. So you can check that out. Next question is from uh, Bennett. He's asking Is there a benefit over using the Octopi image, which includes Octopi panel? So, like I said before, uh, if you start off the, the Octopi image, wait, you do start off with the Octopi image. Uh, so, yeah, okay, so he's talking about Octopi panel. Octopi panel is something that's bundled in with the ready to go image uh, for Octopi and the Raspberry Pi. I've tested it out. It's, it uses a Pi game, 
and it's a little bit uh, it's Kluji. a little bit slow. <laughs> it, the buttons are a little bit smaller. It's specifically for a 320 by 240 screen, so you have to kind of hack a little bit to work with the the uh, the 480 by 320 screen. Um, and I've tested it out, and it, it wasn't working out too well for me. Maybe it'll work out for you, but um, when I was I actually wanted to do the video project using Octopi Panel because I had already done a video on Mobile Touch UI, but then when I revisited Mobile Touch UI, they, they, uh, the developer, uh, Billy Blaze on GitHub, had it updated it and made it a little bit better and faster. So I, I, I figured I would focus on that and not Octopi Panel. So that is, uh, that's it. I've tried it out, and I'm not liking it too much. Octopi Panel. So there you go. Hopefully that answers your question, Bennett. But try it out if, if you haven't yet. Uh, uh, Brian, who's probably in the chat room, is uh, asking a similar question about the FlashForge Creator Pro. Uh, he basically outlines some of the problems that I've experienced with yep. uh, the uh, what's the, the plugin name? The I don't know what the plugin the name X, is. It's like X, uh, what is it? The X, uh, Sailfish X, X or something like that. X3G, Creator G, whatever. Yeah. yeah, X3G. I think is the is the plugin name for Octoprint. Uh, that's supposed to work well with uh, the, f the selfish firmwares and, and makerbots. I've experienced all those problems. We have to I've take experienced the SD all the problems. Card out for it to even work. Yeah, um, that's what we so, recommend. Astro print for yeah, that. Yeah, for Flash Forge stuff and um, makerbot stuff. So selfish. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, the developer will, will work on it some more. But right now, I think it's uh, at a standstill. Mm -hmm. Not too sure. Uh, but yeah, I've experienced the same stuff. Again, Astro print is probably what you want to try out. Give that a shot. All right, next one's from Andres. He's asking why 240C on PLA. He thinks that's a little bit high. So somebody actually already responded to him saying, um, just outline, you know, it's not, not all printers are equal. A lot of nozzles are different, and a lot of materials are different. Uh, some folks can print OK at 190C to 200. Others don't work so well at, at that. Um, there's, there's different just levels of uh, materials, so. That's why it's a suggested temperature right. on so the uh, spool there. You don't have to follow our settings, but um, you just have to find out us, what works yeah. for you. So that's about it. Yeah, I mean, um, as we've said a lot, it, a lot of times before, it depends on like the environment you're in, like your, um, your area you're in. I mean, we're always like in, in a cool spot. Okay. Um, like there's vents around, so maybe yeah, that contributes yeah, to cooling things that down. That and just your construction of your nozzle, right? Yeah. So. Like how accurate Some of them, is your yeah. um, I think, sensor? I think the E3Ds actually maintain better heat, so you can print lower temperatures. Mm -hmm. So there you go. All right. Next one's from David. Um, oh, so David's asking. Um, he's trying. He built the the, the, the Pi Girl two build with a Raspberry Pi three. He used our, our our ready to go image for Pi Girl, and it didn't work. So the problem is that um, you have to manually install frame buffer tools in the, the Adafruit kernel for the Pi TFT. So there's a little bit of a process that you have to do. Um, and that's why uh, tomorrow I'm releasing the video on how to actually prepare your Raspberry Pi 3 for the Pi Girl 2 stuff. So you start off with the, the retro game, the latest version of retro Pi image, and then you install the Adafruit stuff on top of it using the, the Pi TFT helper scripts. And of course, the Adafruit uh, retro game, which will, which will uh, make those virtual keys for the GPIO, the yeah. button, the gamepad. So I run through all that stuff. It's about 30 minutes. So um, I think uh, that will help you out because it's, a, it's I can't just like give you a link. It, or not, I can give you a link, obviously, the video, but it's a, it's a long, it's 30 minutes it's to a lot of set steps, it up. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of steps. Yep, you, already ac you actually already have the video ready. You're just going to yeah. prep it for it tomorrow. Yep. So, um, so this is going to work with the Pi 3, with a B. Plus, and with a Pi 1, because right now the image is specifically, the one in the guide is specific for Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi 2. So there you go. And on a side note, uh, everybody in the factory is going to have a uh, Pi oh. Girl build party. Yeah, so Dan O'Wall, uh, lead manufacturer at Adafruit, uh, is uh, hosting this build party where uh, a lot of folks in different departments of Adafruit and HQ in New York will be assembling and soldering for the first time, making a Pi Girl 2. I think it's pretty awesome. That is a really cool, it's like, like workshop type deal. The coolest uh, project, I think. Yeah. What do you say? He printed out like twenty different. He cases? printed like twenty cases out and buttons. Yeah. And uh, 
Yeah. He needs the. He needs the. They're all using Raspberry Pi three. Yeah. So that's what prompts me to like. like Let me just try the. Pi oh, it doesn't work. The image doesn't work with Pi mm. three. So I got to figure out. Okay. Let's be on the lookout for an awesome time lapse for Manufacturing Monday. Hopefully. That would be cool. Yeah. So. Thank you for that. Cool. Thanks for. I forgot, Peter. Thanks for that. That's all the questions that are queued up in the YouTube. Now we can go ahead and do some live questions if you guys would like. Um, Let's see real quick. Pages in the chat. Nanobot astronaut is asking free inexpensive CAD software for making STL files. He's tried OpenSCAD, but it's a little time consuming. Yeah, I mean, I like uh, one, two, three D design is great if start you're just starting out, and then you move on to Fusion 360. The cool part about that is if you start off in one, two, three D, you can import all of your files into Fusion later. That's right. Like everything remains intact. I mean, we used one, two, three D for like two years, while, like yeah. for a while. So I still love it. It's still great. But uh, once your projects get really big and you have to start using layers, layers, and, <laughs> layers and um, components, then Fusion 360 is where we want to go. What's your profession? I call myself a designer. Uh, uh, we're content creators. We're like the marketing team because we come up with projects and you know, uh, it's supposed to inspire folks to get into electronics. You don't have to use parts from Adafruit, but if you do, it helps the mm -hmm. company out. I mean, yeah. You know, so for years, I called myself a 3D modeler, film, uh, video editor. Yeah, um, yeah, Pedro. Yep, video editor. I mean, there's a lot of modeler, things we do. Yeah, animation. I mean, uh, the After Effects stuff. Like I, I hand animated, so we do quite a bit. But it's hard to put it in one. Like oh, I'm a maker. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, what advice question. would you give for DIY 3D printed wearables? Uh, without access to a 3D scanner, a fair amount of modeling experience with OpenSCAD. Uh, I mean, it depends on the project you're doing. Like, uh, it, it's wearable can be as simple as this clip I did for my little square mm -hmm. box. If you're talking yeah, about like, wearable. like, I don't know if you want to make like a cuff for your arm or something like that. I mean, just using take measurements, right? Just take um, a lot of a, measurements. Um, yeah, but you don't want to use a caliper. You want to use a. Uh, uh, oh, the flexible um, little uh, what do you call it? The fabric uh, fabric measure. I don't even know what thing. these things are yeah. called. <laughs> it's like a it's like a flexi uh, ruler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a tape measure, maybe like, maybe a tape measure. I don't know. Yeah, a flexible tape measure. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, just measure it out. Um, yeah. When we're doing like wearable things like that, I just eyeball it. If you don't have a scanner. Yeah, and and stuff like. Uh, Flexible material like NinjaFlex or Filaflex gives you a little uh, bit of leeway since yeah, you, since you can print it. it flat and then it can just curve around any contour of your body. Um, so yeah. Uh, apologies if this already been answered. You can skip it. But what kit printers you recommend? That have good product support. Um, shooting for around five hundred to a thousand dollars. Isn't the simple metal still a kit, or no? They discontinued that. Uh, I think they still had it as a kit, and they have pretty good support. So check out uh, PrinterBot. Okay. Uh, Kirby suggesting Hobby King has one. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, do some research. I mean, we don't have much experience with the kits. Yeah. Ah, flexible tape measure. Got it. Yep. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Definitely got to have one of those. Yeah. You want to do like head. Yeah, like something for your head, head like something yeah. for your wrist, something for your waist, something for your ankle. Someone's recommending the Prusa MK2. Oh, the Prusas are awesome. Yes, check those out. And they check those out. And I think they just, um, uh, what is it, Joe, Joseph? Yeah, Joseph. Prusa, Prusa. I think he just came up with an update too. <laughs> Excellent. Any good, any good place to buy LiPo batteries in Europe? Can't order from the U.S. because of battery shipment. I saw Pyramoni is starting to stock some. Oh. So they just came out with some. So check them out. And also subscribe to them on uh, YouTube. They just did a live stream yeah. an hour ago. Actually, specifically start um, uh, started shooting at 11 a.m. So we didn't conflict with their time so we could watch them. <laughs> That's right. So definitely check out Pyramoni. They are an Adafruit distributor. You can get a lot of our parts from there, too. Because yep. it's closer, you won't have to pay any crazy shipping fees. Right, or Check just look on out. Amazon. Maybe there's some local oh, yeah, distributors that, on really Amazon good. UK. All right, Kirby saying you're hubby king for lipos. Oh yeah, yeah. Check those out too. Cool. And I think that's gonna be it for All right. this week. Yeah, guys. If you have another question and we didn't get to you, please drop them in the comment. Once the video is done, once the stream is done, we're gonna run through community makes this where we. Uh, 
highlight and, and share some projects that we thought were really cool this week from you folks in the community. So let me get that going. Let me go to this one. Okay, so this is just a Pi Girl. Pi Girl Zero build was printed on a printer bot by uh, Thingiverse user MKLRBR. Uh, very nice. Like the color really combo nice. here. Yeah, very cool. So he used a raft to keep it from curling, although it doesn't look like any raft yeah, artifacts really are on clean, it. Yeah. So it's really good. Good yeah, job, sir. To the share. Um, this person here, uh, Tinko85, printed the, yep, Dodecahedron, printed the Jumbo one. Looks like he scaled it up 0.45%. Uh, really Looks cool. Looks great, yeah. <clears throat> 0 0.2 layer height. Looks great. It's amazing. Yay. Um, and then, <clears throat> man, my voice is, is, is losing. Uh, duck soup, duck soup, <laughs> printed out the Octoprint rig for his uh, Lost Bot Mini. For his Lost Mini. And uh, he also came up with, or he shared a link here, his GitHub link. This is how to create a Raspberry Pi kiosk so using the Chromium browser. So if you want to make it so that your Octoprint rig automatically boots up and loads in kiosk mode and, and launches the website, uh, the, uh, the IP address of your, of your Raspberry Pi. Then uh, you can you can follow through this and um, get yourself kiosk mode. So that's really cool. So you don't have to manually set it up each time. But I mean, Log once in, you yeah. set it up, you just set it and you walk away from it. And cool. Thanks for sharing that. This is the large screen version of the Pi Girl 2 uh, by Thingiverse user L Elevos. So you basically got the 3.5 inch uh, LCD from Ton Tech. There's a manufacturer that makes um, uh, Raspberry Pi specific LCDs. It's using the frame buffer tool, so it's very similar to the Adafruit Pi 2T, but it just doesn't have the buttons, and I think it has like a different display driver. Um, so you can check that out. He's got all the links here if you want, if you're interested in it, and um, you know, used all the Adafruit stuff. Yep. But yeah, this is what we'd like to see when you guys uh, sort awesome of add remix. your own yeah. remix to it, add your own spin to it. You want a bigger screen? Well, you have, you're totally free to make your own screen. I like the color combos here. Great cool. job. Next up, we got an awesome Pi Girl Zero. Yeah, I just like this one. Um, I like the quality. I like the almost. colors. Yeah, yeah, nice quality. and shiny. Super nice, yeah. On a printer bot, simple metal. I think it, it looks Might like glass. Might have been glass. a heated bed, yeah. Looks really clean. Great job. This is from uh, Sudia. Very cool. Yep, one thing worse. And last, we got something from Voodoo Manufacturing. Oh, we got more. We got way more. So this is this just cool. So Video Manufacturing released this. This is. This got featured uh, a little bit earlier in the week. This is a full-sized person, life body model. This just reminds me of like a... I mean, like a mannequin, I'm Like sure. a mannequin, yeah. Like they're very expensive, cheaper, very yeah. laborious. And this is probably like a cheaper way to do I'm sure it weighs mannequin. a lot, um, or weighs less than a real mannequin. So yeah, it's cool. not plaster. Yes, yeah, so this was really cool. And it's a bunch of pieces. Should we print this? Let us know. Because... Uh, <laughs> I mean, this would be great for wearable projects since we want to like make custom mm -hmm. armor and stuff. Yeah. There you go. Then you have to wait. So next Let's up, try to speed through yep. this. We got to get to. This is really cool. Somebody cacked their Ultimaker to play Super Breakout. If anybody out there has an Ultimaker and has some time on their hands, try this out. I haven't looked too deep into it. Should be handy if you have to watch or monitor a print, and you want to kill some time while you're monitoring. <laughs> I don't know if the print. it's a printer. <laughs> I don't or, know. Maybe. maybe I don't know. Uh, Michael uh, put together a, neo, uh, a nice enclosure matrix. for his, uh, Neopix for our Adafruit NeoPixel matrix. I uh, designed it in Fusion 360. Wow, that's, that's cool. great. I didn't even know that. Acrylic stuff. Check out the link that we'll have down below. Nice diffusion. Nice build. Nice uh, documentation Very of this cool. build in a, in a YouTube video. Check that out we the video play. there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Kirby. He released a video on uh, upgrading or fixing the TAS that we sent him. So this is in TAS 4. We had some rusty rods. He replaced it out, and it's working pretty good. I think he's got some other things that he wants to do. Yeah. Man, he's fast. Look how fast he's working. <laughs> this is real speed. Real speed, man. <laughs> uh, and then he also is doing Time Lapse Tuesday videos, so check those out, too. Be sure to subscribe to Kirby. Hey, Stuff he does with a Kirby. lot of software, a lot of modeling, and now a lot of upgrading mods for the Tazes. So yep. definitely check that out. And the last project I wanted to share with you, you guys, you guys heard about this pocket chip computer? all the rage now. We'll this guy here, kids. yeah, <laughs> this guy here uh, kind of built one, sort of, out, I, I call it a pocket chip, um, but it's basically a Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, an LCD, and a cute little keyboard. He's broken out the GPIO and the SD awesome. card, and he has USB parts, and it's 
uh, USB, Wi-Fi dongle. This looks amazing. A nice little 3 d print case. Um, so check out uh, Moby Pre, or I guess his name is uh, uh, Taka, Taka Yu. Uh, Moby.electronic on Instagram. I follow him on Instagram. That's how I found this project. And he, so he designed this at Fusion 360. Um, here's some photos of uh, the inside of it, the inside of the of the builds, and he does a lot of unique builds, a lot of uh, Game Boy, Raspberry Pi type stuff too. So if you're looking for somebody to follow on Instagram that's inspirational, this is really inspirational stuff. He took a Raspberry Pi and put it in a Nintendo DS. Wow, that's dope. That's so cool looking. He's got an acrylic case here, mm. so you can see all the electronics in so there. So cool. Really cool. Uh, from Japan, uh, Naro Japan. Very very cool stuff. Folks, if we didn't get to your project, we apologize and just run out of time. And there's a lot more projects on the blog, blog.adafruit.com. On the so hour, sure every hour, sometimes every half hour. So yeah. subscribe, check it out. Don't forget to take advantage of our coupon code. That's right. Which is? FAA Drone. Fad we are run. sponsored by you guys. Buying yep. stuff in the store. Check it out. Please do. And uh, be sure to use the coupon code if, uh, if you want to buy some stuff. I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we'll be here next week. Cool, look, we kept it under an hour, Pedro. 15 oh, wow. minutes. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, right, folks. Ours. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us in the chat room. Always appreciate you guys tuning in live. Of course, this is pre-record, or this is... Uh, streamed on... Uh, archived later. Uh, we're streaming right now on... on Twitch, Facebook. Yeah, so Facebook might not work right now. Right? Is it work? Um, I don't no, know. For whatever reason, and yeah. did not stream If you're Facebook. new to the channel, guys, we have a bunch of shows. This is 3D Hangouts. It happens every Thursday. But we also have a show and tell where people come on all over the world, share the projects with Lamar and Phil. Lamar and Phil. Lady Ada. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lady Ada. Yep, we're they run the company. Yep. They started it all. <laughs> they influenced the maker community. So be sure to check them out. Uh, Ask Engineer happens, uh, what happened yesterday. It's on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Pseudo random, happens with Colin. Colin's doing it up. So is Tony, Tony D, watch Tony's desk. I forget yeah. the dates. They happen like Fridays, I guess. Uh, Mondays Fridays and Fridays Mondays. for Tony D, yeah. Okay, and and then he does pseudo... uh, deep dive code and Raspberry Pi and really cool projects. Yeah, Lady Ada is, uh, ran is random it's as well. pretty random, yeah. yeah whenever. So just subscribe time. and uh, you'll catch all those shows. And of course, they're recorded. So subscribe to YouTube. Give us a thumbs up if you like this show. Yep. And if you want to follow me and Pedro, um, I'm at Ekin, right no, there. At Video Pixel up there. Video Pixel. We'll post Honestly, probably yeah. some progress on the BCN. And what are we printing over there on the Type A machine? Yeah, what do you guys think that is? It's a little blurry, but it's a big bulb of something. Yeah. All right, folks. That's it for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again. And we'll see you guys next time. See you guys. Bye, everybody.